On the Health Watch tonight, children may have an advantage fighting off COVID. Dr. Malika Marshall is here with us tonight. Doctor, their secret <laughs> weapon may be their nose? That's right, those little snotty noses. They do a lot of good work. You know, children tend to experience milder symptoms of COVID compared to adults, and Australian researchers may have discovered one reason why. The nose. They found that the lining of children's noses mounts a greater inflammatory response to earlier strains of the coronavirus, reducing the virus's ability to replicate. Of course, this was less striking with the Omicron variant, suggesting that kids' nasal defense advantage over adults may be lessening as the virus evolves. So Very interesting. Bad. Okay, well, this is interesting, too. Women outlive men by an average of five years, but there are some factors that can help close that gap. The odds are better for men in terms of longer life if they're married. If they're married, yeah. So right now, one to two out of every four men can be expected to live longer than women on average. But a new study finds that men who are married or have a college degree have a better chance. And if a man is both married and has a college degree, he can be expected to survive an unmarried married woman with only a high school education. They say educated men may be more informed about what it means to live healthy and men in good marriages may have those strong social support systems which we know has been linked to longevity. Huh. One more reason to like have faith in those connections. That's right. Okay, and there is one thing you can do after eating to reduce your chances of developing diabetes. What do you think it is? Exercise? <laughs> Talk to someone? Of course. But not, <laughs> but not a lot of exercise is required. Look, when you eat, you get a spike in blood sugar, and that's followed by a rise in insulin to control that blood sugar. In excess, this can eventually lead to diabetes. But researchers in Ireland have found that light walking for as little as two to five minutes before you get that spike in blood sugar, usually 60 to 90 minutes after eating, can reduce both blood sugar and insulin levels compared to prolonged sitting after eating. They say walking engages your muscles, which helps use up some of that excess sugar in your bloodstream. So instead of just lying in a recliner or lying on a couch after you eat, get up and do a little walking. Especially if you have a dog. Makes everybody happy. Makes it a lot easier. Doctor, thank you.